What's up guys, Steve here from the Adapted Machining Channel. And I just wanted to um, give you guys a rundown on Kipware T. And the main reason why I'm doing this video, I uh, was searching for an easy cam solution, something that's going to give me more capability than the Mach 3 Wizards had, and not as much of a headache or learning curve or full-on just CAD cam industrial CNC capable solution like uh, Fusion 360 has. So I was looking around and I stumbled upon Kipware T. And it's a bit of an anomaly to me because there's not a whole lot of user uh, driven videos out there on Kipware T. And everything that I can tell, it seems like they market more towards shops. So actual machine shops, mach uh, machine shops with industrial. CNC equipment but conversational cam I think is perfect for most of the home shops home hobbyist users and this program is not just a conversational program this is full featured turning software there's so many things that this supports through conversational screens but also through the sketchpad which allows you to import any shape, any profile, and be able to create toolpaths to machine that out. So, background on my lathe, which was a Grizzly G0602 converted to CNC, running Mach 3 turn. I had Mach 4 on it as a demo. Uh, there's literature out there that Mach 4 at some point will probably support canned turning cycles. But there's so many other things that are just wrong and glitchy with mock turn to me that just make it very difficult, very hard to understand. And as soon as I started reading about Centroid Acorn and seeing that these can cycles are supported, I made the switch. So I'm in the process of getting my lathe uh, converted over. I do have my control box fully assembled, tested ready to install. I'm actually going to be putting it in the lathe later today, but I do have some other upgrades going on with the machine. But I figured I would do this quick video just to demonstrate what is Kipware T and why I think it is the absolute perfect companion to uh, Centroid CNC 12 for turning. So We'll go ahead and cover just some of the conversational menus that they have here. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. So they have a bar feed menu, uh, facing menu, so uh, specifying facing off apart. Uh, simple turning menu, this is probably the most common one. This one lets you specify in elements. So say I wanted to turn a 3 inch piece of stock down to, and we'll say that uh, at uh, minus... 2.5 inches in the Z I wanted to turn it down to 2.5 inches and I wanted the front face to be zero and now I can start specifying angles of corner one uh, radius for corner two or angle or radius for corner three so let's say I want to give corner one a uh, 0 0.150 45 degree angle Corner two, I want a radius of 0 0.060. Corner three, I want a chamfer of 0 0.150 at 45. So I can add that to the elements. If I wanted to do multiple steps, I would continue on down that same path, adding to the elements. Specify that I'm going to be rough turning and finished turning. So I want to do a roughing and a finishing tool path. Amount of clearance in X. We're going to say we've got 5 thou. Amount of clearance in Z. We're going to say we've got 20 thou. Depth of cut per side. We're going to do 40 thou depth per cut, which is a little on the light side for my machine. And it tends to throw the best chips at about 50 thou depth of cut. Finish amount on the X, Z axis. We're going to do 5 thou. Retract amount per side. 40 thou retract. Roughing feed rate. I'm going to specify the feed rate in inches per minute, but I'm going to go kind of high for this demo. So 25. You could do RPM or surface feet per minute. 
Uh, you have to change the G96 to G97 if you wanted to do RPM. I'm just, for the sake of the demo, going to put in 1250 finishing feed rate of 15, and we'll do 1600. So I can create a program with a CAN cycle, or I can create a longhand G code program. From this menu, I always have been creating longhand G code program. Uh, mainly because this will show me the roughing tool path when we go to plot it in Kipwer TP. So we'll create that. It named it, added it to the cycle tree, and now we can preview that tool path. So this shows it roughing out, finishing, and we've basically done exactly what we wanted to accomplish with that. So what you could do, say you wanted to do that, you wanted to do facing, uh, rough and finish face the axis coordinate of the finish face is zero diameter of the stock was three inches total material to face we're going to take off 0.030 thou depth of cut in z um, 0 0.020 smallest diameter face two amount of clearance next 0 0.05 finish allowance in z So I'm just throwing in numbers here. So we're going to create this. All right, so it's been added to the tree. We're going to go ahead and reorder these because we want this to face before we turn it. We can come back in and view these tool paths. Go ahead and plot. So there it is. It faced the part, and then it uh, profiled it. So from this point, we can define things by creating operations, we want to use tool one for all of this. We want to do a starting spindle speed of 1,000 RPM. We want to start at uh, 3.25 in the X and 1.0 in the Z. And we want to tell it which one of these cycles we want to use this tool, this starting point. We want to do it for both, so we're going to put them both in. We have a, just a standard Fanuc as written by Kipware post processor, which in the demo has been working great for a uh, Centroid. And create the G code and boom, we've got a program here. We'll make a few changes to demo this out. G98. We're making sure these G96s are actually G97s. Uh, if you do run your machine in G96, which I will be, then you don't need to change any of that. And this is just to demo it on the box. So. All right, looks like we're all set there. I'll go ahead and save this. Desktop, let's call it 1919demo. One, one, save, okay. All right, so we've created a, a facing and turning program. Really easy, you were able to see the tool paths ahead of time. And nothing against Intercon in Centroid. I just like this work flow better. So, alright. So I've already uh, had this up and homed out the machine, so we should be good to go. Just need to find that 1919 demo graph, and there we are. This one right here is something that would need to be tweaked. This is going to cause a crash. But again, you can go into your program and figure that out. Actually, uh, if we go back in Kipware, minimize this. Oops. Let me see where that is coming from. So we'll have to figure that out, but that's actually pretty easy. Um, and that may be actually just where the current tool position is. So we'll go ahead and run this. Just see what happens. There we are doing our uh, facing.
So now it's uh, roughing out this new shape. There it is with its final finish path. Okay, so that was it. Just a quick demo on that. And stay tuned for the next video, which is going to demo how you can import a custom uh, profile. So um, just a DXF of a custom shape and then create tool pass from that. Um, um, actually, let me, before we go to that, I'm just going to run down a uh, quick uh, explanation of all the different menus. So simple boring menu, just like it says for internal boring, and you can do things like uh, radiuses, um, chamfers, and multiple uh, spots on the bore. So... Uh, drilling menu, you can do multiple cycles, different cycles for different depths, different, you could specify different feed rates, spindle speeds, different peck depths, different types of retracts, uh, chip break cycle, complete retraction, how much you're going to retract. So uh, pretty cool, pretty intuitive um, grooving. So OD grooving, you can specify chamfering doing uh you know chamfering here like uh on the outside edge of the groove just at the top if you want to clean it up id grooving uh face grooving shoulder grooving id shoulder grooving uh pulley grooving on the od id pulley grooving uh, knurling menu male radius female radius there is OD threading, ID threading, also have rigid tapping or tapping with a float hold or a floating tool holder, and ID chamfer, OD chamfer. You've got OD tapered radius groove, so uh, creating a tapered radius with a round turning holder. OD radius groove again using a round turning holder and then just a ball and you can specify if you're doing it with a round type turning tool or if you're doing it with a pointed turning tool so pretty cool um, again we're gonna come back and go over a kipware sketch pad which is the money